content warnings. This video will be displaying penis prosthetics for educational purposes, as well as mentioning topics like genitalia, gender dysphoria, and a brief discussion of sex. Packing is the process of creating a bulge at your groin by using a packing prosthetic called a packer to convey the shape of a flaccid penis. Wearing a packer can help the wearer feel more comfortable, confident, and aligned with their gender, so it's often a beneficial experience. This can be done for costumes, drag, transitional purposes, or any reason at all. Additionally, packing isn't something that is a universal need or requirement for those transitioning for a more masculine appearance. It's simply an option among many. Today, I'll be showing you some of the most common types of packers, how to make packing supplies at home, and how to securely pack with them. Feel free to check the description below for timestamps. There's a wide variety of ways to pack, and an expansive list of packers to choose from, so I'm going to simplify these options into categories and break down each of their pros and cons. Firstly, we have foam packers. These are simplistic bumps made from foam, which provide a more discreet but curved look. This packer is simple to use, especially in underwear with a pouch to hold it in place. The non-phallic design can be great for younger people or those who don't want a detailed packer, and it can make storage a little less awkward if someone happens upon it. There are foam packer models that do have a slight phallic design if you like the foam's features but want a more detailed version. These can be hand washed gently with soap and water and air dry. Overall, the pros of going with a foam packer are, they are easy to use, just put them into place. The design is discreet and lightweight, making it easy to store. They can be customized by trimming the edges to make the packer smaller if it's too large, and these are generally more affordable, being under 10 USD. The cons foam packers can have are, they aren't as detailed and aren't weighted if you're looking for a more natural sensation. These aren't machine washable, so gently hand wash this packer or it will be damaged. The next packers I'm about to show are explicitly penis shaped, but it's important to acknowledge that these aren't designed for and aren't functional for sexual uses. These are simply prosthetics made for cosmetic wearing. I will briefly show one model later that can be used for penetrative sex, but there are also other models that can include functions like assistance standing to pee. Our next kind of packers are non-silicone and TPE packers. TPE stands for thermoplastic elastomer, which is a non-toxic and latex-free substance, but it's a porous material, meaning it can hold stains, mold, and bacteria. Here's a packer like this that I stored accidentally with pencils, giving it graphite stains that I can't wash off. This material also breaks down with time and washing, which leads to the packer gradually ripping and breaking. To wash this packer, you can use warm water and soap and air dry or gently pat it off with a towel. These cannot be boiled or put in the dishwasher as intense heat will destroy the material. Washing leaves the packer incredibly sticky, so powdering it with cornstarch can reduce that sensation. Now, that sounds pretty negative, but it's not a bad option for those who are interested in packing and want to see how a packer this style looks and feels when worn, as these are fairly affordable, usually around or under 20 USD. Because of that, it's a good first packer, or a packer for those who don't usually pack daily, only situationally. So, overall, the pros for the TPE packer are, it's affordable for those interested in a more phallic packer, it's more weighty than a foam packer, and has a more detailed look. The cons it has are, TPE is porous and not durable, making the packer not as hygienic and long-lasting. It is a difficult material to upkeep with cleaning, and it's not heat resistant. Storage is less discreet, so keep it in a good spot. And packers of this style can be more difficult to adjust to wearing because of their weight and shape compared to foam packers. Now, we are moving on to silicone packers. Platinum Cure Silicone is a non-porous, latex-free, hypoallergenic, and 100% body safe option. It's durable, heat resistant, and overall a great choice, but typically runs a much steeper price tag, this one costing around 50 USD. This price tag can go up further if you want a more customized packer with detailed painting or multiple uses like the joystick, which runs for around 300 USD. There are usually companies with seconds or B-grade models with slight inconsistencies like bubbles that can be marked down for a lower price if you like silicone, but the full price isn't an option. The price tag can be thwarting, 
but silicone is long lasting and can be fully disinfected. Like TPE packers, you can hand wash with soap and water, but many silicone packers can also be boiled or washed on the top rack of a dishwasher to be fully disinfected. Be sure to check cleaning instructions to make sure your packer is fully heat resistant and never store silicone products with TPE or other soft non-silicone blends as this can deteriorate the material. It's safe to store with other platinum cured silicone products, cloth and foam packers though. Silicone is a great option if you're someone who packs consistently and would like a highly detailed and durable packer. There are plenty of silicone packer options that also function for standing to pee and penetrative sex if that's a feature you'd like. Overall, silicone's pros are it's weighty, highly detailed, and offers many options for multiple uses. A silicone packer will last for a while and is able to be cleaned and disinfected easily. Its cons are Silicone products are significantly more expensive than other kinds of packers. It's not as discreet and will need to be stored carefully away from materials that could damage it. And it can be difficult to adjust to wearing because of its shape and size, like TPE packers. The final packers we will cover are homemade options. All these packers you can make at home with materials you find and you can customize them to your liking. These are great if you're on a budget, not out as trans to those you live with, or don't like any of the previous options, I'll cover a few methods of these packers and show you how to make them. First, the quickest and easiest method is making a sock packer. Yes, you can just ball up a sock and pin it in your underwear, but I'll also show you a method of rolling the sock into a more phallic shape. I'm basing this method off of Hey It's Grayson's short tutorial, so please go check out the original video if you like this. To make this packer, you will need three clean crew cut socks of any color you'd like. Take two of the socks and separately roll both of them down to about the heel. Once they are rolled, take them together and place them in the third sock, pulling the unrolled sections down to the toes of the third sock, with the rolled sections up closer to the top. After that, push the top of the third sock in between the rolled up socks and push that fabric to the toes. Now, with some adjusting, you have a sock packer. If you're worried about the shaft losing its shape, you can use athletic tape to hold it together. And it's easy to remove and reuse when you need to wash the packer in the laundry. Just don't forget to unroll the socks. Next up are hand sewn packers. If you like making crafts and want a more secure and customizable option, this can be a great and fun method for you. These you can make with any fabric and supplies you have around, but their downfall is their durability and washability because of their materials. Now, I won't pretend I'm the best at sewing and designing patterns, but hopefully this will give you a general idea of inspiration to create your own packer. I've created two models and patterns that I'll link down below if you'd like to print out and follow along. To make these, you will want these supplies ready. Fabric, filling, and thread of your choice. A sewing needle, scissors, and a utensil to draw on the fabric like chalk, pencil, or pen. First, I'll be showing you a look inspired by the foam packer simplistic look. When designing this, I had the idea that using multiple panels would give it a more three-dimensional look, but that ended up not being the case. Feel free to adjust my design if you'd like, to try what I did, or just use two of the oval shapes rather than making the extra panels. Anyways, I'll quickly walk you through making this. After you've printed out the pattern and cut the shapes out, you'll want to place the patterns on your fabric of choice and trace around the edge so we can cut the shape out. Once you've traced and cut your fabric, we're ready to sew. If you're unfamiliar with sewing, here's a quick rundown. Get your thread and cut about as much as double the length of your forearm. Then grab your needle and put the end of the thread through. Match the ends of the thread and knot it off a few times. Then cut the extra ends off. Now we are ready to sew. Make sure the sides with your tracing are facing outwards, not inwards. Start by pulling your needle through the fabric so our knot is snug against it. Then push back through to the side we started out on and continue 
making sure to pull the thread tight. You will have stitches that look like this, but it's okay if you make a mistake as long as the fabric is held together. Keep your stitches pretty small and close together so the fabric is held together securely. If you run out of thread, make sure you stop around when you have about a finger's length or slightly less left. Push through like you're going to make another stitch, but don't pull the thread all the way through. Leave a loop to bring your needle back over through and then pull it tight, knotting our thread. You can do this once or a few times to be safe and then cut the ends off, rethread your needle and keep going until you have about an inch left that isn't sewn. At this point, we are going to knot it off and flip this inside out. You can use a pencil or stylus to help push everything through this small opening if needed. Now, it's time to fill our packer. I just used some polyester fiber filling, but if you want, you can get creative and use a mix of lightweight filling and something weighted like rice if you'd like. Once it's filled, sew the opening shut and your packer is complete. Now, here's a more complicated model. This one, if you don't want the flap for pinning in your underwear, you can do two of the bottom flap and sew them together instead. For this video, I'll be showing you my original design with the flap. So, once you've cut out your pattern linked below and traced and cut your fabric, we'll begin sewing. I started by sewing the top flap to the bottom flap right here at this corner between the P and the F on the pattern. I continued sewing along the edge until right around the same spot on the opposite side. This is where the bottom back piece comes in and we will sew it to the bottom piece connecting the two, leaving this top flat edge open. At this spot, we will flip our packer inside out. Using a pencil or stylus here will be super helpful. To fill, I use the same polyester fiber fill as the other packer. Once it's filled to your liking, sew this edge closed and your packer is complete. Awesome job. If you use my patterns or follow this tutorial, I'd love to see how your packer turned out, so feel free to at me on Twitter. After all this, I'm sure you're still left wondering how you're supposed to wear these. It's a very real concern that your packer could travel on its own accord to a place that isn't where you put it before leaving the house. Wearing tight-fitting underwear can help to keep your packer in place, but it isn't always 100% guaranteed. Let's look at a few options for making sure it stays exactly where it should. A great option is packing underwear, like this pair, with a designated pocket for placing your packer. There's many other designs and styles that can include zippers or other methods of securing your packer, but the downfall is you will need to buy quite a few pairs of these to avoid running the wash daily. You can also sew a pocket like this into your underwear you already own, if this is the method you like. There are also companies that make packing pouches that either pin into your waistband or magnetically clip onto your underwear. These are incredibly versatile, allowing you to pack securely with any underwear the pouch can fit in and attach to. Similarly, there are also packing harnesses that are simple elastic bands that can hold phallic shaped packers under your underwear. Both of these products can also be made at home too. With all of that in mind, feel free to test your packers out at home and see how they feel and how secure they are, then adventure out wearing it once you feel ready. If you decide packing isn't for you, that's perfectly fine too. Well, that's all for now. See you again soon.